Alright, it's Henry again, and today I'm going to be doing a video that people have been asking me to do ever since I first started airbrushing back in 2010, and that is make an airbrush tutorial. Now, the way I've got this planned out in my head is that this is more than likely going to be a six-part video series, because if I try to cram everything you need to know into one video, it would probably be more than an hour long. So for part one, I'm going to be going over the different types of airbrushes, compressors, and regulators, and moisture traps. So, there are two main types of airbrushes. You've got single action and double action. Now the difference between these two is how the paint and air is controlled. In a single action airbrush, you push down on the trigger and the air comes up and the paint comes out simultaneously. You don't really have any individual control over them. With a double action airbrush, you push down and that releases the airflow. And then while you've pushed down, you pull back and that releases the paint flow. So you can control both the air and the paint individually. With that, you have a lot more control over how you uh, can do the amount of paint and the speed at which it's coming out of your airbrush. So if you want to do any kind of pre-shading or highlighting or gradations or anything fancy like that, you're probably going to want to go with double action. Single action is good for doing solid, uniform paint jobs. 99% uh, of the modelers uh, out there are using double action. Now another difference is siphon fed and gravity fed. And basically that refers to how the paint is uh, coming out of the airbrush, or actually being delivered to the air, rather. With a siphon fed airbrush, the air comes up through the hose, through the airbrush, and then the pressure of the air is going to cause the paint down in this bottle to be siphoned up this little plastic tube, at which point it mixes with the air and then comes out of the nozzle. With a gravity fed airbrush, the paint comes out uh, sorry, the air comes through the hose, the paint is here in this little cup, and obviously the force of gravity causes it to come down, at which point it mixes with the air, and they both come out of the nozzle. And another difference is external mix versus internal mix. With an external mix, uh, which is pretty much exclusively uh, single action airbrushes, you've got the paint down here in the little drawer, it's and the air comes through the airbrush out the nozzle here and the air pressure siphons the paint up uh, to this little nozzle on top of the bottle and they mix outside of the airbrush body and spray out. Well, the internal mix is obviously the opposite where the air comes through the hose and the paint and the air mix inside of the airbrush's body and then are sprayed out of the nozzle. Uh, one advantage to external mix is that it's really easy to clean up because you don't have to run any thinner or anything through the airbrush itself. All you have to clean out is the bottle and the little plastic tube. With an internal mix airbrush, there's a lot more cleaning involved. And internal mix can apply to single action or double action airbrushes. So, right now I have an Awada HP CH and you know there's lots of different airbrush companies there's Iwata, Mr. Hobby makes airbrushes, there's uh, Testers, Aztec, Pash, Badger uh, just tons of airbrush companies I'm not even sure I could go over all of them but if you're really serious about doing Gunpla and doing like nice paint jobs I would suggest getting a just a solid double action gravity fed airbrush. Uh, a lot of people like to start out with the Awada Eclipse series. Um, I like the high performance, the HP series. Uh, let's see, this is the one I have right now, the HP CH. So just do your homework and 
try to find the one that works best for you. Uh, here's mine. I'll just show you how it works. Air comes up through the hose. This thing has a needle inside it. There we go. And what happens is the air comes through. Like I said, the paint is in the cup. You've got a teeny tiny little nozzle here. And this needle goes through the body of the airbrush. Oops, if I can line that up properly. And the needle comes out at the nozzle right there. Like I said, you push down on the trigger, that's going to do your air, and then you pull back, and that is going to pull the needle back, which allows paint to come out of the nozzle. So at that point, you've got air and paint both coming out at the same time. So you can see when you pull back on the trigger, the end of the needle back here goes back as well. And then it just comes out of the nozzle. So you can see there. And that's pretty much how airbrushes work. Uh, you'll notice you'll see some airbrushes with this right here. This is a micro air control valve. It's not really all that necessary. What it is is just fine tuning the air press, uh, pressure. If you have a regulator on your air compressor, it's not really going to be all that necessary, but it's nice for fine tuning it if you don't feel like going messing with the uh, regulator too much. Now, as far as compressors go, uh, the first compressor I had was a little tester's clear blue uh, air compressor, and it worked great. It did everything I needed it to do, and I never had any problems with it. Uh, since then, I have upgraded to an Iwata SmartJet Pro. The little tester's airbrush uh, compressor was nice, but you know, it didn't have a regulator, so I had to get that separately. It didn't have a moisture trap or anything like that. This one uh, is a bit fancier. It's got a regulator and a moisture trap built into it, so I don't have to worry about buying those separately. Let's see, I'll show you the regulator right there. And it's just a really nice compressor. It's got an auto shut off uh, so that it's not actually running the entire time. It only runs when it needs to build up pressure. So really nice little compressor. Uh, you can also get different things for your compressors like uh, external air tanks so that way you can fill up the air tank to the pressure you need it and then just up and turn the compressor off until uh, your tank runs out of air pressure. Uh, but other than that compressors are you know, they all do practically the same job. Uh, they're not nearly as, as varied as airbrushes themselves. As long as you've got a reliable compressor and a regulator, uh, you should be good to go. Now, as far as regulators go, I ought to explain what they do. Um, a regulator regulates the air pressure coming to your airbrush. Now, if you were to turn on your air uh, compressor and hook it up to the airbrush and run it without a regulator, you're going to have really strong air pressure at first, and then it's just going to get weaker and weaker and weaker until you stop spraying and it starts building up pressure again. And trust me, that's going to get old really quick. You're not going to like doing that. So you really need to get an air regulator. Um, if your compressor doesn't have one already built in like this one. So what that's going to do is it'll keep your air pressure at a constant rate. If you want 10 PSI or 12 PSI, it'll keep the air pressure constant the entire time you're spraying every time you push the trigger. So they are a lifesaver. And the last thing, moisture traps. Um, Honestly, moisture traps kind of depend on where you live. If you live in a really humid place like Florida, for example, you're probably going to want a moisture trap because these compressors are little motors and they're running and condensation will build up. 
and sometimes that condensation will run through the air hose and come out of your airbrush and that could spell trouble uh, for your paint job so to prevent that you get a moisture trap uh, like I said mine's built in but you can also get them separately that'll just hook onto the air hose uh, somewhere between the compressor and the airbrush they're usually not very expensive and uh, that's just going to collect that moisture and keep it from coming out of your airbrush but if you live in a dry environment like the southwest you might not necessarily need one so I think that just about wraps things up for part one of this video series and in part two I will try to go over uh, spray booths so with that I'll see you guys next time